assistant professor here of quantitative marketing at IIM Ahmedabad. My research interests broadly lie in economics of digitization, platforms and advertising. Um, I use experiments, field experiments working with firms and quasi experiments to answer specific questions that are related to video advertising, uh, platform dynamics, AI human interaction and uh, method methodologically I uh, use reduced form models, uh, structural models uh, as well as uh, field experiments uh, to answer questions as I said that are pertinent to uh, platforms, advertising and AI human interaction. The motivation behind doing what I am doing is um, I, I call it that way that I get paid to do something that I really like. So the biggest uh, thought process behind doing the research that I do is that it should be relevant to the industry. On the other hand, many times industry lacks the rigor or the careful thought process behind doing certain things and that I do bring to the table. Uh, so rigor, rigor of academia and relevance of industry is something that motivates my research and that's why all my research is actually jointly with firms. Broadly, I work as I had mentioned in three different research teams. Uh, first one is uh, AI human interaction. So there are multiple projects that I'm working on. One of those is uh, with a healthcare app where the pain point was AI is scalable. You can use AI to scale and provide solutions to the end consumers. Humans are not scalable. Yeah, you cannot have humans uh, as a touch point for a consumer all the time. Now, in a weight loss setting, imagine you have a consumer uh, who wants to lose weight and comes to your app. Uh, you can reach out to a large number of consumers by just having an AI bot who can guide the consumer and the scale is huge. Or you can have humans in the loop, uh, but humans cannot, you cannot hire tons of humans to provide services to every uh, individual. So the middle ground is AI plus human and we work with an app to understand if you have an AI plus human, that is a human in the loop versus just AI which leads to better health uh, weight loss outcomes. And what we found was that AI plus human uh, coach uh, helps you lose more weight than if you are just leveraging an AI coach. Uh, so that's one stream uh, of AI human interaction. In this, in this stream only I have another project on generative AI where we use generative AI uh, text to video to generate advertisements uh, which are algorithmically made and are targeted at scale to individuals and we really wanted to study if uh, these kind of ads which are not human-like do they create uh, algorithmic aversion and people don't respond to them well. On the other hand what we found was that scalability using AI for creative advertisements can actually work and it leads to better retention outcomes and we work with a, a large-scale D2C uh, sustainable commerce uh, platform. The second stream of research is on video advertising and we had looked at uh, projects like uh, if you are a platform and you see a lot of those ads and videos which play in the background when you go to any website, any platform, content platform. Uh, you must have noticed that before you can actually see that video there is an ad which plays, which is a pre-roll ad, right? We wanted to see that whether a long ad which has a skip button versus a short ad which does not have a skip button but it's for the same product and has the same storyline uh, which one works better in a real world setting and not in an artificial lab setting. Uh, the next stream of research is on platforms. On platforms we are working on recommendation systems, ratings, uh, personalized ratings as well as um, onboarding process, longer versus shorter and how much information you ask consumers. So those kind of uh, problems that are relevant to the industry. Uh, I think the, the projects that I just mentioned, all of them start with a pain point mm -hmm. uh, that company has and many times they don't have an idea about how to even to figure out how to uh, m measure it or how to actually see the impact and that's where there is a lot of back and forth. So I'll say that the challenge comes in terms of operational aspects and then tech cap capability. 
so operational aspects many times companies especially in india or southeast asia what i have seen they don't have resources to allocate to problems which are more long term yeah and secondly uh, they are not interested in very carefully doing things which academia cares for so a lot of time goes in that back and forth of just narrowing down to the problem and figuring out how to do it make it work and then comes the data analysis part and that is a very consistent theme across all my projects i think two first is generative ai and uh, that will have a humongous impact on how consumers search uh, how consumers uh, behave on the platforms uh, scalability of services and products that you provide to consumers uh, that's something that will have a tremendous impact the second thing is explainability now we are talking about ai then trustworthiness of ai explainability interpretability of uh, machine learning models that is something i see uh, which is going to have a large impact on academia as well as practice and that's essentially that move from correlational to causal studies uh, so that these are the two trends i see uh, coming up ai is going is already impacting and is will continue impacting the field of marketing and when i say marketing i say marketing which is at the intersection of operations economics information systems uh, two ways back end and front end uh, back end is all the machine learning models deep learning models that are working at the back end <clears throat> they are going to impact uh, how consumers behave uh, with the platform or the app but that is happening at the back end <clears throat> so as product managers as data scientists the skill set which will be needed is uh, uh, understanding of algorithms understanding of uh, recommendation systems ai human interaction more psychology yeah and then front end <clears throat> front end is more um, where chatbots is one example where the individual is talking to the consumer uh, the, to the bot so that psychology of how should you present that bot in front of the consumer what kind of voice it should have what kind of pitch it should have those softer psychological aspects uh, the need for those skills will also increase so it's uh, both hardcore data science skills and then you have those soft skills of psychology interaction communication with uh, ai and bots i think i'll continue doing what i'm doing that's my assumption uh platforms uh people are interacting directly with d2c brands that's amazing uh, recommendation systems because now we have content content is everywhere we are addicted to our phones to our devices yeah so ultimately that uh, that game of relevant content uh and how to recommend relevant content uh, so my assumption is in the coming 3 to 5 years i'll continue doing what i'm doing because that's something which is impacting lives uh consumers and society as a whole i'm not sure if i can give any advice per se but i'll suggest focus on skills is very important hard skills plus soft skills uh, so skill development is something that is a very good hedge in terms of just preparing yourself uh, for outside world which is industry working outside and also for yourself when you learn a new skill it humbles you because you just don't learn it uh, for many people they are gifted they can just learn skills very quickly but for others it's a, a back and forth experience so it humbles you it makes you see the world around and the second one is a bit counterintuitive but i'll say uh, have a balance of what you do on a daily basis and then new experiences that opens up your mind quite a bit so as an academic i am saying that don't just restrict yourself to uh, classroom yeah have more hobbies uh, just roam around and see the world around that's a very good way of uh, improving your personal and professional life you just you broaden your horizon i think bridge desa center is one of the um, most amazing centers not just at ima but also uh, uh, for the country and academia in country as a whole because this is one of the only actually only centers that caters to the hardcore ai aspect in terms of algorithm development and then the impact on businesses 
it's, it's applied as well. And that's a unique combo. And along with the sharp minds that work uh, or are associated with Bridge Disa Center, uh, I'm very upbeat and I feel very privileged and grateful to be a part of uh, Bridge Disa Center here.